guys welcome back to my channel i think we're almost there this is like video seven of like 85 and um we are finally on i think this might be the last video of curriculum that we're using for this year how i planned my year with multi homeschooling multi grade levels i have a four-year-old a six-year-old and an eight-year-old so that's a preschooler and a first grader and a third grader and um I just I, it was gonna be way too long to put it into one video so I just split it up into separate videos and now we are finally on um, I probably could have split this video up as well but I'm gonna try to breeze through this one and this is just kind of like my elective type video this is what we're going to be doing for geography for computers and then for a little bit of for music and for poetry so first I'm gonna start with geography we I wanted us to really explore again or just do a quick review over where we live and basically just you know where we live in the country so what country we live in what state we live in what city we live in that type of deal so that's going to be our very first thing to cover is a review of that it'll just be a nice review for the boys and then it'll be a, a little bit of an introduction for savannah who is my preschooler so i'm starting off with that and then what I wanted to do was, I, I, I thought about getting a whole separate um, curriculum. I was really interested in one specific curriculum. I can't remember what the name was. And I wanted to purchase it, but it was like $30 on Amazon. And I just, I just didn't feel like it was what I needed to do. So um, I put the link to in the description box to the one that I was looking at. But um, I just thought that I have resources at home already and I just need to go ahead and use the resources that I have. So I'll show you what I'm going to be using and how I figured I would like split it up uh, amongst the year so we can study a little bit deeper into our geography unit. And I'm really excited about this too because I'm kind of hoping that you guys will help me out in this area. I'm excited about that. <laughs> so I basically am using four main resources for geography and they're all things that you guys have seen before i'm using this maps book and this book is a celebration of the world from its immense mountains to its tiniest insects and everything in between explore the world with this lavish book of maps and then we're also going to be using our 50 states book um, these books are really chock full of information and the hardest part is figuring out how to include them in your studies um, and I think that I'm getting closer and closer to using them better so we've got the 50 states book the next one is a new one and this one is the hello atlas so you guys know that I'm obsessed with languages and I thought this was a really, really cute book about all the different languages of the world. And I thought it would be a nice fit to go along with our geography study. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, it, it basically goes through the different parts of the world and it's just a quick little introduction to the different languages in the different parts of the world it has a corresponding app to it um, it's the free app that you can hear more than a hundred different languages so I downloaded that as well and I just thought this would be a nice little a fun addition to our geography study so I have this one as well I love this book isn't it beautiful it's a beautiful book and then the last one I have is A Year Full of Stories. This book is gorgeous. I'm such a sucker for gorgeous books. Anyway, um, this is just 52 folk tales and legends from around the world. So each of these stories are, um, they are organized by, each story belongs to a different part of the world. So this one, um, The Little Red Hen is a Russian story. King of the Forest is a Chinese story. So I thought this book was so cute and um, I thought it was a nice little addition and as we discover different parts of the world I can just pick one of these stories that corresponds to whatever part of the world we're studying and we can just add that to our little plan. So yeah, these are the four books that I'm going to be using. <laughs> they're, so, they're so big. <laughs> can you even see me? Hey guys. Anyway, these are the four books that we're going to be using and i'm so excited about it so this is how i plan on using them i plan on doing one continent every five weeks so we're going to be exploring a different continent 
for five weeks at a time. And then at the same time, we're going to be doing one state per week. Now, if I don't absolutely stick to this, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but that is basically my plan. One continent per five weeks, one state a week. And we'll start this after we do the quick review on where we are in the world. Um, and then how I laid it out is, like I said, I, I really wanted to get the curriculum that I found that I can't even remember the name to, but, um, but I just thought it wasn't going to work well for our multi-child homeschool. So I just kind of laid out some of the things I wanted to cover each time that we um, talk about a different continent or a different state. And I just have that listed in my goals section and I thought I would just be very creative with how we approached learning about those different things. More than likely we'll probably put the information into our notebook or um, write about it combining or we will combine it with a writing assignment and then include that inside of our composition notebook. Um, there's just different ways that I think of in my head that we could incorporate that um, into other subjects as well. So we'll see how it goes. Um, what I like about the way that I've planned this year and how my planning has been growing and evolving is that it's not any, it's not any one particular thing. There's many different ways that I can approach um, our different goals and topics that I want us to cover throughout the year. And I happen to really, really like that. It fits for me. Um, that is just the way my brain works. And, I, and I, I think it's the way my kids' brains work because I'm their mom. And so it works for us. And I know it might not I, I guess I hesitated to do videos like these in the past because I, sometimes I feel like they're not very helpful um, because it's not a set thing that we will be completing. But I also think that that's the beauty of it and I feel like you can adapt it to whatever you know fits best for you as long as you have a, a guide or an outline of what you would like to cover. <laughs> and when there are times when I'm not as creative in my mind, I'm just a little overwhelmed with life or something and I'm not as creative, um, that's where the apps and some of the resources that I have tagged, like worksheets and things that I can just kind of pop into their, um, into their iPads, that's where those things come into play and help me out when I just can't think of a creative thing in my life. So <laughs> that's how I do that. Anyway, um, so how I am approaching it when we start to talk about a new continent or a new state is I just have a list of things that we can explore. I, I have going to the library for books on that um, continent or state and then listening to traditional music, a documentary or a video about that specific area. We can explore the culture, um, what are some of the popular foods, traditional clothing, we can draw the flag, um, we can talk about a, a historic event in that area, um, a famous landmark, uh, what do you want to see in this area, how do they get around in this area, and we can find a recipe. So those are just some ideas to help me jumpstart um, my creativity in that area as we explore those different parts of the world. And that is how we are doing geography. Um, the apps that I have for this specific subject are the Hello Atlas, which I just talked about, the Barefoot World Atlas. I really like that one. Um, I can't remember how much it was, if it was free or if it cost anything, but I can include the information in the description box below. And then I also have Intro to the United States. It's a Montessorium app, and I really like that one as well. So those are the three apps that I'll be using in conjunction with geography. And like I said, if I don't have anything fancy planned for that day, I can always turn to these apps and know that they are learning um, lots of goodies about whatever it is that we plan on learning about <laughs> so that's what we're doing for geography another a little elective that I can kind of put in there oh computers so for computers this is the same one that I used last year that we just never got around to completing and it's really totally my fault because the kids the kids are ready to learn 
at all times possible. So I feel like when we are better organized as homeschool moms, um, we can put more in front of them and they have more things that they can learn and explore. So each year I feel like I'm getting better and better at doing that. And so that's why it seems like a lot of information that I'm covering in this year, but I just wanted to have a lot of options. But anyway, for computers and coding, I'm just using this again. This Usborn Lift the Flap Computers and Coding. I thought it was a nice little layout of different topics that you could explore as far as computers and coding are concerned. And then I can add extra things into the mix as they come along. Like I've been wanting to get the um, the Osmo for the iPad. I've been wanting to get that for a long time. So um, I may actually do that when we start working on our computers. What I basically did was it's not, we're not gonna be working on studying computers the entire year. It's just gonna be kind of like a 16 week course. And we're gonna just do one page out of this book a week. And then we can just pick up any other apps on coding. Um, I know they had like a little toy for Savannah. I thought about this little toy called the Coda Pillar. Have any of you guys, do, you, do any of you guys have that? The Coda Pillar? So for her, I'll probably um, get something like that. And then for the boys, I'll probably do, I'll probably do something like the Osmo. Well, of course, Savannah can use the Osmo as well, but you know, when that comes around, then I'll look into purchasing those items, but I don't need to get it right now because we're not starting um, computers just yet. I love these types of books because they basically lay out the curriculum for you. So the first one is what is a computer? So that's what we are going to talk about for the first week. This is basically my computer's curriculum. Yeah, that's it. Now, what is the other thing I wanted to tell you guys since this is my last video in the curriculum section? There's been so many videos, you guys. Anyway, um, I hope you guys are enjoying this and you're not totally bored. I really wanted to split them up into separate videos so you wouldn't get completely bored of me. So, I'm sorry. I had a few other things that I have planned out that are possibilities for us like Spanish. Spanish didn't really need a plan. My plan for Spanish was just to um, continue on with the Duolingo app and any other app that I have for vocabulary practice. Um, I really, really would like to have some type of immersion program, but I haven't figured out how to accomplish that in life right now. Um, at the beginning of last year, I had met someone in the library who um, who had an au pair, and her au pair was from a Spanish-speaking country. I can't remember which one, but anyway, she invited us to come over for play dates, and so we would go over there um, every week, and we would just sit and play with the kids and the au pair, and it was great. It was like a wonderful natural immersion program for my kids because they would just play with these children who spoke English but also spoke Spanish so it was really really cool and that kind of it, it just kind of fell to the wayside because I think the the au pair was actually she was her au pair but she was she was her sister-in-law and she ended up having to go back um, I can't remember I think it might have been Guatemala she ended up having to go back home and when she went back home, I just never, I just never stayed in, I, we didn't stay in contact very well. And I actually need to reach out to her to see how she's doing. But anyway, that was like a great way for us to get in that natural Spanish immersion. So I need to figure out a way um, to do more of that. I also have um, an uncle and an aunt who live not too far from us and um, my aunt is from Colombia and so I had looked into maybe her helping by hanging out with the kids and teaching them or just speaking to them um, you know once or twice a week because they don't live too far away but she wasn't they weren't able to do that because they were going to be um, away a lot more often than they'd be able to commit to doing. So I need, I wanna find something like that, but maybe through um, the internet, some type of program where we could live chat with someone from a native speaking country. I don't know, I have to figure that out. If, you, if any of you guys have any suggestions or if any of you guys have like a bilingual home that could give me like some tips and stuff, it's just, I can't do the whole like Spanish class thing because I just I don't know how I don't know how great it 
it's going to be for me to try and do that. I would much rather find some type of program where we could get some immersion in on a consistent basis. So I would love any tips or suggestions. I really, really would because in my, in my soul, I'm like a multilinguist for real. <laughs> anyway, um, what else did I want to say you guys? So that was Spanish. I did computers. Um, I also have a small business course, but that is just going to kind of be a natural progression with the Falco kids, which I'll share with you more and more as we go along. And I'm excited about it, you guys. The Falco kids is going to be amazing, okay? For music, you guys know that we just, um, probably once or twice a month, we get to spend some time with... Um, Brian's sister and her husband and they're really awesome with introducing the kids to different music concepts uh, so from the computer um, the computer from the piano to the guitar um, they talk to them about music notes they play different music for them so that is how we're currently doing a music class and then of course we just I just keep on different music every day and we do lots of dance parties and singing so that's how we do music right now <laughs> so we'll see where it goes but um, in addition to that I had this little disc this CD I got um, in with a curriculum that my father's work curriculum that I tried that year and this is just Peter and the Wolf and then I also have this from my fave Vanessa she had done this neo soul nursery rhymes with her sister and it's super cute and so we're gonna be listening to that and I'm just gonna be collecting a bunch of different stuff that we can listen to and talk about the different instruments or um, the different ways they make you feel and things like that so it's just gonna be a natural thing for music for us right now um, not my strong point so we're just gonna try to introduce them to different things and see where it leads I have a, a few books that I want to cover for poetry um, I just have the classic where the sidewalk ends so we are going to work our way through that and then I have this one which I've had this book for a while and never actually used it I got them this as a gift from one of my best friends from college and um, I'm like, why not try? It comes with, this is Hip Hop Speaks to Children. So that is it, you guys. That is it. Oh, this has been a long several hours, so I'm really hoping that it's helpful to someone. The next video that I'll have coming up after this, I think, will be a shopping trip. So I'm just going to take you shopping with me. Um, to pick up some basic supplies and some other random things and then also my bullet journal for um, For my reward for planning. That's like my present to me So I'm gonna take you shopping with me on the next video and then after that we once we start school which is going to be on the 5th of June then I will do the day in the life the three day in the life videos for each of my kids and that will hopefully show you a little bit better how I am using the actual curriculum in their day and what their day looks like because of it. So that is it you guys. I hope you enjoyed these videos. I have a few more left in the series to come. But I don't think that the next one will be tomorrow necessarily. Um, so I won't say see you tomorrow. <laughs> but if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed if you want to see more from us and be notified when we post. And as always, if you have any questions or you just want to say hi, you can leave me a comment below or send us an email, anything like that. Thank you guys so much for sticking in here. And I will see you in our next video.